It is often assumed that psychotherapists can read people's minds, which would be an amazing skill to have if it were to be true. Perhaps better equipped to deal with the challenges in life, but invincible? Certainly not. I mean, do you know anyone who hasn't faced any hardship in life? And can we be better prepared to deal with it? With a decade of experience as a psychotherapist, I've had the opportunity to work in the private sector, in the NHS, and with many charity organizations. Working with individuals from diverse backgrounds has been a truly incredible experience because it's given me the insight into the lives of many, from top executives to gold medal Olympic athletes, to those working on the front line and the homeless. It's important to challenge the stigma that is often associated with mental health because despite our individual differences, we all have mental health which is just as important as our physical health. I too, even with the advantage of being a therapist, have to deal with the ups and downs of life. According to the World Health Organization, one in every eight people in the world lives with a mental health condition. And did you know that 75% of these conditions are established by the age of 24, which can go undiagnosed for many years. Now, despite strides being made in the mental health field, Many are so reluctant to seek support. So between you, the person on your left, and the person on your right, should all three of you need support, only one of you is going to actively reach out for it. And when you do, most of you will be given medication, some of you will be given talking therapy, and some of you will be given both. With NHS waiting lists increasing, people are now waiting up to two years to be seen. Many have no choice but to wait or to pay to access private services, which can be difficult with the cost of living crisis. The pandemic undoubtedly has made things so much difficult for everyone. And we're heading towards a mental health crisis if we're not in one already. And so I'd like to propose a more preventative approach to doing things a bit differently, to focus on enhancing well-being by focusing on physical, emotional and psychological health, which can help bridge the gap between those that are reluctant to seek support and those that are currently waiting to be seen. I was actually here three years ago and at the time I was quite poorly and I got long COVID and I watched everyone else do their TED Talks thinking I'm so far away from this. So I applied to do it for about three months to kind of get prepared for this. But mental health is something that I'm really passionate about. And I think there's so much stigma, so it's important to break that stigma. So I'm here today to help break that. So my own experiences in 2021, I became quite poorly due to going through some difficulties in my life. It weakened my immune system, which made me susceptible to catching COVID-19, which weakened my system. So I think when it comes to mental health, there's three tips that I would give everyone to look after themselves. The first one is to get the right support. Mm -hmm. It's important to go to therapy, which is the same as going to see a doctor. It's important to find a therapist that you can connect with, who can help you to learn about your life experiences and how they shape the way you see the world. You don't have to struggle on your own. The second point I'd like to make is important to reconnect with life because we're all gonna go through difficult times and so it's important that we can reconnect with it by engaging in things that help us to feel more connected with who we really are, to do things that give us a sense of achievement, things that give us a pure sense of enjoyment, and to do things that help us to connect with others. And I think the final thing and probably most important thing for me is to have faith and patience. Life often has a better plan than the plan we have for ourselves. And so it's important to have patience and to focus on who you want to be and to move forward step by step. So my experience has taught me there's a need for a more holistic and preventative approach to mental health. And so I set up a community interest company with the intention to create a healthy society, to make mental health and wellbeing accessible to all. So my mission is to empower young people with the skills and to empower adults with the skills to navigate their mental health journey, to improve staff well-being 
and to focus on more compassionate leadership. And I guess a key thing and a real reason for why I'm talking about the prevention is because as a South Asian Punjabi woman, I was not taught about mental health growing up. And I wonder, you know, were any of you? A taboo in many cultures, even today. And I remember a young girl telling me that she was told by her mother that black people don't have mental health issues. Even when I started working in this line of work, I remember relatives asking me what I do. And they would comment and say, you just can't find the jobs these days. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess being, being a therapist was not held in the same regard as being a doctor, being a dentist, being a lawyer, especially in the South Asian community. But things have changed since then. There's more awareness, there's more representation of mental health than there has ever been around the world. But there is one thing that I find many people struggle with, and that is generational trauma. The passing of trauma from one generation to the next. Something which is often overlooked, especially in the South Asian community and not spoken about. Did you know that South Asian men and women are at a higher risk of developing a mental health condition, such as depression and anxiety, when compared to their white counterparts? Generational trauma has a role to play in this. It affects individuals, it affects families, it affects whole communities who choose to suppress their trauma instead of work through it. Now, while this is not the case for everyone, many are still told that this is just how it is, which can cause a conflict between more traditional and, and modern perspectives when it comes to things like pride and honour, societal expectations, gender roles, and even living arrangements, leaving many like me to feel that you can't have any autonomy or any support. So my trauma led me to feel like an empty shell of the person that I used to be. And it weakened my immune system, making me susceptible to COVID-19 and where I developed long COVID. And that's why I keep forgetting what I'm saying. <laughs> I remember struggling with work at the time with a lack of support from my manager. And I remember being off for a period of nine months and initially fearing that I'd never live a normal life again. I remember struggling to go up and down the stairs with multiple health issues and visits to the hospital where I chose to refuse to take medications, lifelong medications. But instead, I looked at doing more alternative things like I went on a rehab COVID program. I tried hyperbaric oxygen therapy and I did gentle workouts like Qigong and yoga before I progressed to more intensive ones like power hoop and body pump. Exercise was crucial to my recovery, which I feel is something that's often underrated. It helped me to avoid processed foods and to reduce my sugar intake with the occasional cheat day that is. <laughs> and surrounding myself with friends and family who are here today a good union rep and occupational health helped me to prioritise my health, helped me to find a voice again and to put things into place so I could return to work. Now, it's been almost three years since things initially took a turn for the worst. But prioritising on my health has helped my recovery to accelerate and it's given me the energy to live a more fulfilling life. Now, I'm still on this journey with my health recovering, as you can see. <laughs> but my confidence is coming back slowly. And I think the key message is there is a link between trauma and physical health, which I think is more established now than it has been. And I think it's key to have this understanding so we can heal from it and create a better future. Because it's not a life sentence and many people like me are choosing to break the cycle. And so one thing I have learned that in life, there's going to be times where you are going to be ahead, which is going to be great. <laughs> there's going to be times in life where you are going to be behind. But it's important to remember that the race is long and in the end, it's only with yourself. So let's prioritise keeping people well and be the generation of change. Thank you.